Today's liturgy tells us of the importance of prayer. After all, our whole life here is one we are to seek a relationship with God. And how do we seek that relationship? How do we nurture it? How do we gain that relationship? After all, God is pure spirit. We are body and spirit. We have a soul. But how do we attain that relationship? Starts with baptism, of course, but we have to nurture it and make it grow. How do we do that? That's with prayer. And that's really what we are being taught here today, that we must not only pray always, insistently, but persistently as well. Because how often we, how often we hear, oh, but I pray all the time, and he still doesn't answer me. Well, the problem here is he is answering, but we may not be receiving the answer we expect. It's how often it is when we pray, we pray for something that we want for ourselves, perhaps some material good that will make us feel good, whatever it happens to be, but we're praying for something we want generally for ourselves. It may be something legitimate though. How often we hear, oh, my child is sick, or this, or that, whatever it happens to be, and we're praying for that, a miracle perhaps. And how often in, we find it doesn't happen right away. And then we're saying, well, but he doesn't seem to hear me. He's not responding. But you see, he is responding. But he may be saying, no, not yet. He's not always going to say yes. Because he wants... And what he's going to say yes to is that which is good for us. And what is good for us? Ultimately, what is that? Our salvation. That is what we need to ask for. Anything that will be good, that is, ultimately, right, in a word, what is God's will? We must seek always his will. And that would then be the object of our prayer, to grow, well, to seek his will in all things, to fulfill his will, and to grow in our love for Him. You see, then the more we do, and the more we deepen our love for Him, the more we're going to realize, no matter what the answer is, no matter what answer we receive, it's the correct answer. And we'll be able to accept it. So we are being told, even if we don't get a response, what seemingly don't get, we are getting a response, but even if we seemingly don't, we keep praying. Perhaps it's to overcome a sinner of vice. Keep praying, persist. And that's really what we are seeing here in today's liturgy. Another point that comes to, to the fore here, both in the first reading and in the gospel, is here, ultimately God is directing his ten attention to those called Gentiles who are not Jews. But here in the gospel, that stands out. The woman that comes to our Lord is not a Jew. So when our Lord responds the way he does, he's responding as a Jew, and he's saying, I've come to help my people, the Jews. I've come to help my people. So he's kind of turning away, but he's, he has an ultimate reason for that. He's testing the woman's faith, she who is not a Jew. And she persists. No, she persists. She kept on. And she got a response that very few ever got. The final response was, Woman, your faith is great. He praised her. And he rewarded her. He granted her wish. <clears throat> without even going to the daughter, without any laying on of hands or anything. Just simply an act of his will. And she believed. That's all it took. And her daughter was cured. You see? There's only two incidences like this in the gospel where a non-Jew is rewarded for a faith without our Lord actually going. The other one is the centurion, who you recall comes and asks him for the cure of his son. And then when the Lord says, okay, I will go, he says, no, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my house. Say but the word. See what a deep faith he's expressing. And our Lord rewards that faith and the son is healed that moment. So we are seeing here, 
even if we're not exactly the same people as our Lord, for example. We're not Jews. It doesn't make any difference for all of us. That's the other point. That's the real point here. Not just the Jews, but for all of us. God is reaching out to every one of us. Question is, are we reaching back to him? That's what he's waiting for. That's what he's waiting for, for us to reach back to him. As you see, he won't go against our free will. That's why he gave it to us, so that we can love him. Without that free will, we wouldn't be able to do it. But with it, we have that capacity. So that's what he's waiting for, to us to reach out and say, yes, Lord, I do love you. I do believe. Help me. He's waiting for us to pray to him, to come and pray. We look at all the apparitions of Our Lady over the centuries, ultimately the last in the last two centuries, but all of them. What was the one thing that Our Lady asked for above all? Well, there are going to be two things that stand out. Well, prayer is the first one, in particular the rosary, and secondly, is penance, sacrifice, which it will require. If we're going to achieve our union with God, it will require that because we have to give up of ourselves. We have to open ourselves to God so he can fill us with himself. It will require that. So that's what we're being asked for over and over again. Pray. Let us get down on our knees and pray. And how we need to. We need to just only look out or go outside and look at our world today. How we need to. See, that's what God is waiting for. How we need to. What are we waiting for? That's what God is telling us. Get down on your knees and pray. Show me that faith. That's what he's saying. In order to attain that faith, we have to pray. How else are we going to get it? We have to pray, we have to reflect, we have to study. And we should be doing so every day. At least a little bit of time alone with God every day so that we can grow in that faith, in that love for him. Then we will see the response we will get, and we will understand much better. And even if it means a little more suffering, a little more, I mean, if it's a negative answer, but we'll be able to accept it willingly, even with a smile. It'll be a great joy because we are closer to Him. And that's all that matters. That's the one thing necessary, as our Lord told Martha, to go in our love for Him to grow in our understanding, our faith in Him. Let us then not hesitate any further. Let us every day get down on our knees and pray. Come before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. No better place to come. And sit there before Him, lay or kneel before Him, and let's pour out our needs. We can pour out everything to Him. We must acknowledge our own weakness and ask his mercy and ask his grace and his help to be able to overcome our weaknesses, be able to overcome our sins and our vices and to grow evermore in our faith, in our love for him. Praise be Jesus and Mary.